Welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. My name is Grant. Today I'm unboxing a new game from White Dog Games. Actually, this came out about six weeks ago. I've just been busy over, this, over the summer and haven't gotten around to doing anything with it. But the game is called Kaiser Krieg, which means Emperor's War. You see the very cool Teutonic Knight there on the front. The Great War 1914 to 1918, a solitaire board war game by R. Ben Madison from White Dog Games. So this game deals with World War I. It is a States of Siege series design by Ben Madison. He's done several of these. Gorbachev, Nubia, The Mission, um, trying to think of other ones. Uh, there are several. I've, Jeff Davis was another one, really enjoyed those games. Um, but this is his newest one, and I'm very excited to open it, get a look at it, and uh, get get it played because I do enjoy those States of Siege series games. This is a solitaire-only board game. Uh, very easy to play. Rules are very straightforward. They have good player aids. Uh, this one does not use, use cards. A lot of them use cards. This one does not kind of a la Jeff Davis, uh, also didn't use cards. The cards are replaced by chits uh, that you put into a cup and draw out each turn. So anyway, I wanted to talk a little bit real quick, really quickly about this art. Uh, you can see there it says it's a Central Powers War Bonds poster from Viet, uh, Vietnam, Vienna, 1915. Really like that look and feel. Glad they put that in there. In this game, you are playing as the central powers, the Germans and the Austria-Hungarians. You are the quote-unquote bad guys, and you are fending off the Entente as they surround you uh, and try to uh, to beat you back. So a little bit of a different lean. If you've, if you've played Ben's games, sometimes you end up playing uh, the losing side. Uh, don't tread on me, you play the British. Jeff Davis, you play the Confederacy. This one, you play the, the Central Powers. So this is a boxed version of this game. This one will cost you about $50. It is a print-on-demand model. So you're going to place your order on their website. Uh, 8 to 12 days later, you will receive a copy in the mail. Uh, and they do a very good job. I think Blue Panther is an excellent printer. Uh, love their smell of their games as you open them up. They'll smell very chemically, chemically, and I, I enjoy that. Call me weird, call me sick, whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and without further ado, I'm going to turn the back of the box over. Some great art there. You got the Kaiser up at the top. You can read the text if you're so inclined. But this game is a little bit different. You'll notice here's the map. And it looks different than a lot of States of Siege series games. We'll show you when we open the box. The tracks don't con converge down a number of spaces to the central point. These are simply boxes on the outside that represent the Entente powers. They're going to build up forces in those boxes, and the rules will say, oh, if you get over five in one box, you lose. Uh, just like if you get counters into the center, you're going to lose. That's a horizontal model. This is more of a vertical model. Uh, it's kind of a new uh, uh, lean on it, and I think... It's, it's very cool. Here's a look at the counters. But once again, I mentioned no cards. You're going to get a color map, a 16-page rule book, a counter tray card, which isn't a counter tray, but you're going to lay, uh, lay it out, and you're going to place your counters on there in certain spots so you know when to put those on the board. There's rules references, clearly named. You'll know even how many of those there should be. You've got a game setup card. There's only one, I think it's a campaign mode, starting in 1914. 176 color counters, and then you've got a, a random events card, which is a player aid that you're gonna roll on and use every turn. So let's go ahead and open the box. Um, I have about a dozen white dog games and I've never been uh, disappointed. Let's go ahead and look at the rule book first. Rule book is 16 pages, it is full color. The reason they do full color is you'll notice examples of play, giving clearer understanding of, of points that are being taught in the rules, will be in this blue skinny text, they say. You're also going to see text in shaded boxes. That will provide some comments from the game designer on why he did this or what the history said, etc. 
You're also going to have major parts that are red, um, case uh, and point text here on the rule book, 1.0, 2.0. Also think it's good that it has a nice table of contents. So you can know, i got to go to page 14 to look at, look at the turn in phase. 16 pages of rules. Uh, we're not going to go through the whole thing, but here you can, you can see it's very dense text, lots of writing. But once again, these are more important parts. These are elements that you're going to want to focus on because it gives you an example or a better understanding of what those rules are or what they mean. So I like that. You're going to pay attention to that. But 16 pages, fairly dense text, uh, but I think the, the rules are well written and the player aids are very, very good. These games are eminently learnable. And usually, uh, after your first play, you, you're almost 100% comfortable with most everything in the game. I will talk about the turn chits. You can see these are called the turn chits. These are what activate the different tracks that are fighting against you, so the Entente boxes. Here, B is for Belgium, F France, I for Italy, S for Serbia, L Lithuania, and U for Ukraine. You'll notice a chit is going to be pulled. This box says, and you're gonna do these in order from left to right, top to bottom. This means that the Lithuanian and Ukrainian tracks are gonna activate. This means Belgium and France, BF, and then here you have Italy. So you're gonna go through those and those are going to act. Sometimes they'll have events on them or special things like die rolling. You'll also notice that is a number. That is kind of the game turn. And they don't always come out in order. Um, I'm gonna to have to actually read the rules, but a lot of times you just throw them all in the thing and it, it might come out of order, but it, it's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, so anyway, that's the rule book. I'm not going to spend any more time uh, on that. Let's go ahead and look at the three player aids that you're going to get. This one is the counter tray that I had mentioned. You'll see it just has some boxes with the Ney economic tiles, central power society markers. It'll tell you how many of the different types are in there. There's 11 cities, one free press, a constitution, and a rule of law. So you can literally pop those out of the counter tray, organize them, and you know, oh, when it calls to put the Central Power Society markers on the board, you're going to look in this box. Or the AAO forces or the Italian forces, they're all going to be listed here. Great way to organize it. Just keeps it uh, clean and ready to go. That's a single-sided uh, piece of cardstock. Um, here is the setup, uh, the game setup. You can see it's it, there's one scenario. It's the campaign scenario starting in 1914. But it's going to go through what you have to do, pretty simple. This is a single-sided thing you're gonna use at the beginning of the game. Then you're gonna throw that bucket back in the box. This is the events table. Um, you'll notice up here on the left, it says you're gonna roll a die plus the turn number that you were in will determine what events happen here. And these events are going to coincide with event text in the rule books that you're, you're gonna to have to look up. You also can see at the bottom, there's a table here. It says over there, the US over there schedule. It's gonna tell you what turn they enter, one turn after the US entry into the war, what core comes on, and then who it replaces on the board. On the back side of this is a very detailed sequence of play. You can literally lay this out to the side of the map um, and follow this each turn. If you have to refer to the rule book, Look, you can know exactly, oh, it's in 5.0 or 5.2. The only better thing would have been if they had put rule uh, page numbers on this, but they, they didn't. There's also a British cruisers table. This is how you're going to determine uh, your blockade runners and whether they get through or whether they get intercepted and how many uh, cruisers are out looking for you. Very cool mechanic. This was a mechanic that... Uh, it's used to get your money, your turn money, but it was originally used, I believe, in uh, Jeff Davis. Really enjoyed it because there's some very there's some very cool choices that come with that, uh, and, and it's also an enjoyable and tension filled part of the game. You have one counter tray. It said 176 counters. You can see they are multicolored. Lots of different colors there to differentiate them. 
Let's go ahead and just kind of take a closer look. Powder blue, you've got the French forces at the top. Then you've got some Russian forces. You can see the over the top counters there. Uh, obviously over the top is an assault, uh, a melee assault. You've got your coins there, Italian forces, Bulgarian. Um, here you have Serbian, Romanian. You have the BEF always uh, eminently included in any World War I game. You've got U.S. forces. You've also got some markers here for British bombers, German bombers, and Zeppelins. So kind of a neat little thing. Some chrome that has been thrown in. These are those turn chits. So you can see there are 28 of them. So that means there's 28 turns in the game. So this is going to be a long game, uh, but it does represent 1914 to 1918. So five years worth of war is simulated into 28 turns. But you can see all different types of letters on those. Uh, L U B I B F L U. That that determines which of those boxes are going to activate. You've also got your uh, blockade runners there shown to the bottom right. Here you have British counters, some event counters, different uh, all different types of nationalities. You have U-boat markers, some political markers down there, um, trenches, etc. So one-sided counter sheet, not dual-sided counters, but I think they're very well done, very colorful, which is, I think, a good thing. Now the map. This is a paper map, and it is folded, and you're going to be horrified when I open it up. But I'll put a piece of plexi over top of it, and you'll never know that it, it uh, doesn't lay flat. After a couple of plays, I probably won't need to use the plexi, but uh, that's what you get in a print-on-demand game that you're paying $40 to $50 for. Uh, and you might ask yourself, $50, that's expensive. Well, remember, they're a print-on-demand so they don't have the benefit of making 2,000 copies at once and getting $2 off each, uh, 2 or $3 off each unit. Here, you're going to order it, and you're going to get your own copy printed, collated, shipped, and ready to play. So just keep that in mind. I told you in the unboxing at the beginning, the map is very different. If you remember the central, uh, the, the solitaire states of siege series model is to typically have a central point with five or six radiating tracks that have four to six boxes on each one of those. Those fronts are going to move towards the center through events. You have to fight them back. If they ever get into the center and you can't get them out, you lose the game. In this one, no tracks, there are boxes. You'll see there are six boxes representing the Entente powers, Belgium, France, Italy, Serbia, Ukraine, and Lithuania. You're going to, when events say do something, you're going to put different uh, counters in there. They're going to activate and attack. you got to defend. If they ever break you, they're going to get into the center and they're going to kill you. So you've got to keep the numbers on those thinned out. Uh, if you don't, they're going to overwhelm you. You'll also notice there are some die symbols. Sometimes there are random rolls. You're going to use those to determine where those types of things are placed. At the top of the map, You've got special events display, just reminding you when those special events happen. I think based on either certain turns or something happens. You've got your calendar up there. That's where you're going to keep your uh, turn chits, I believe. Um, this is the omnibus markers track. Not sure what that is. Then you've got a whole bunch of smaller boxes around the edge. These represent either different holding boxes, British cruisers, blockade runners, or minor theaters in World War I. Here you have German East Africa, Gallipoli, Bulgaria, Romania, the Ottoman Empire, Mesopotamia, Egypt, Ottoman Palestine, Ottoman Armenia, Yerevan, India, etc. So those are just little side uh, areas where you're going to have things pop up or happen and you're going to need to uh, control or destroy those forces there. You've got an air superiority track. And it looks like it really is tied uh, to different events and things that might or may not happen to you. You've also got some revolt boxes here. So you, you've got different things that are going to happen from time to time based on events. I think the map looks good. It's very functional. Um, I'm going to put a, a thing of plexiglass over top of it and you won't even know that it's 
uh, doesn't lay flat. One other thing I wanted to point out, these numbers in the North Sea and the North Atlantic, um, you're going to notice they have numbers and a letter. Some of them also have an iron cross on them. 1A, 2B, 2C, 3, and 4. You're going to have blockade runners that you're going to place at the beginning of the turn. You might have one to three of those. You're going to place them in different areas, hoping to get through. Then you're going to roll dice. You're going to refer to a chart, and it's going to tell you where those British defenders go. If they go to a box where you've placed one of your blockade runners, it will be seized or destroyed, and you won't get the money uh, for that location that turn. If the cruisers do not come, you're going to get the money based on 2B is going to give you X, two or three coins. 3 is going to give you one coin. 2C might give you two coins. So you're going to have to decide. Some of the richer ones are a little harder to get through. The ones that are going to give you two and three coins, the British cruisers are going to protect those, so you got to be careful. So there's a little bit of luck, but there's a little bit of choice about how much you want to push that luck. Really enjoy that aspect. Looking forward to that in this game. So that's a look, uh, ladies and gentlemen, at the Kaiser Krieg, the Great War, 1914 to 1918 from White Dog Games. Very cool little design. I'm excited uh, to, to get this one played. I, I always have enjoyed these games. I, I've never really played one that I didn't like. I also really like Ben Madison's designs. I think he does a great job um, incorporating different aspects. I, I just enjoy it. So... Looking forward to playing this one. I hope I hope you've enjoyed the unboxing. Um, I also have a little bit of a cut on my finger that's bleeding. I can see I got some blood on the rule book, but isn't that the sign of a good game that you've got blood, sweat, and tears all over it? So anyway, thanks for watching. I've been Grant for the Player's Aid.